Hello viewers, in this session uh, we will solve some problems uh, based on the theory we have seen so far. So uh, like before, uh, I encourage the viewer to uh, solve as many exercises uh, from the textbook uh, as it takes to gain confidence uh, in the subject matter. So uh, here I will uh, be able to uh, solve a few problems uh, which will uh, sort of uh, use the theory which I have discussed so far. So after each uh, question that I present here, the viewer is encouraged to pause the video and try to solve it by himself or herself. Okay? And then you can uh, look at the solution that I present here. Okay? So let us start uh, with the following uh, question. This question uh, is sometimes called the minimum modulus theorem okay so or a version of it so let f be analytic and non zero in a region a okay show that uh, the modulus of f okay has no strict local minima on A. Okay. So, uh, the solution is here. Okay. Since f is analytic and non zero. more importantly non zero okay uh, in a 1 by f is so you can consider the function 1 divided by f which is non non zero so there is no zero in the denominator 1 by f is also analytic in a okay now by the maximum modulus theorem Okay. We know that uh, the modulus of 1 divided by f okay, has no maximum on the open set, okay, on the open connected set uh, A. Okay. Uh, if the modulus of 1 by f has a maximum that has to occur at the boundary of A and not at any interior point of A that we showed. Okay. So, uh, this has no maximum on A. So, what this uh, means is that, uh, so uh, f has, modulus of f has no strict local minimum at A. Okay, uh, on A. Okay, so, this is easy. So, the next question is as follows. By the maximum modulus theorem, we know that uh, if we consider a uh, entire function and a bounded set, okay, then uh, the entire function will have its maximum modulus somewhere on the boundary uh, of the bounded set. Okay. So, here is uh, a question to find, okay, so find the maximum of the modulus of sin 0 on 0 to pi cross 0 to pi. What that means is the x variable is within 0 and 2 pi and the y variable is within 0 to pi. Try to answer this question and I will present the solution here. Okay, the solution is as follows. So, uh, when you look at the sin z sin of x plus i y, this is equal to sin x cosine h y, it should be cosine i y, but we know that cosine i y is cosine h hyperbolic cosine y okay, and plus um, cosine x sin i y, which is i sin hyperbolic y. So, i sin hyperbolic y times cosine uh, x, okay, right. So, the modulus of sin x plus i y is going to be uh, 
a simple calculation shows this is going to be uh, sin squared x cosine h squared y plus sin h squared y cosine squared x. Okay. Okay. So, this is equal to sin squared x times uh, 1 plus sin h squared y plus sin h squared y times cosine squared x, uh, which is equal to uh, sin h squared y times sin squared x plus cosine squared x plus sin squared x, which gives us sin h squared y plus sin squared x. Okay. So, uh, now sin squared x we know is between uh, 0 and 1. Okay. So, sin squared x is at most 1. Okay. And sin squared x is equal to uh, 1 when x is equal to pi by 2 or 3 pi by 2 okay, in this interval 0 to pi. Okay. So, now the maximization problem just boils down to uh, the maximization of this function. Okay. And uh, we know that the maximum occurs only on the boundary of this region, the square region 0 to pi 0 to pi. Okay. So, we are only interested in uh, inspecting on the boundary region uh, where this expression attains its maximum. Okay. So, we can look at sin h squared y. Okay. Sin h squared y uh, is an increasing function. Okay. So, sin h y is an increasing function. Okay, that is because uh, cosine h y its derivative is never 0, it is actually uh, positive strictly positive. So, uh, so sin h y is always an increasing function and attains uh, maximum at uh, y equals 2 pi. In the interval 0 to pi, its maximum is obviously uh, at 2 pi. So, at y equals 2 pi you have a maximum. So, sin uh, z on the modulus okay, has a maximum at the point pi by 2 comma 2 pi okay, or 3 pi by 2 comma 2 pi. So, what I mean by this is this is a point in the complex plane 2 pi belongs to C. Okay. So, that is the maximum of sin uh, z. Modulus, modulus. So, the next question is the extended uh, Liouville's theorem. Okay. So, uh, suppose that f is an entire function and if for some integer k greater than or equal to 0, okay, there are positive constants a and b such that modulus of f of z is less than or equal to a plus b modulus of z power k. That inequality is true for any z belongs to C. Show that f of z okay, uh, is a polynomial of degree at most Okay. So, we are calling this the extended Liouville theorem, uh, because uh, when k is equal to 0, uh, you are saying that the modulus of f is bounded uh, by a positive real number. Okay. Uh, so, then uh, we know by Liouville's theorem that this is a constant uh, function. So, f is definitely a polynomial of degree 0. Okay. So, now we can extend this uh, to any k, any integer k. Uh, which is non negative. Okay. Please try to solve this uh, exercise and I will present the solution here. Solution. What one does is uh, one proceeds uh, by induction because we need to do this for every positive non negative integer k. Okay. So, notice that 
k equals 0, okay, the statement is true. for k equals 0, okay, the statement that f is a polynomial of degree at most k is true uh, for k equals 0 uh, by Liouville's theorem. Okay. Now, that is nothing but the Liouville's theorem. Okay. So, now suppose that Uh, under the given hypothesis, okay, uh, the statement is true, this statement uh, is true, of course, only under the given hypothesis okay, uh, for any uh, k okay, uh, less than or equal to uh, or strictly less than a particular integer n. Okay. So, n a non negative integer. So, we are going to show that the statement is true for n itself. Okay. So, uh, define uh, h of z to be a split function f of z minus f of 0 by z for z not equal to 0 okay, and uh, define this to be f prime of 0 at z is equal to 0. H of z uh, we, we define it to be this kind of split function. Okay. So, uh, we will show that f uh, h is uh, entire. Okay. So, first notice that uh, f has a Taylor series expansion around 0, which is valid on all of the complex plane, because f is entire, f of z can be written as f of 0 plus f prime of 0 uh, z plus f double prime of 0 by 2 factorial times z square etcetera. Okay. Uh, and this is valid, this expression is valid uh, for all z belongs to C, because f is entire. Okay. And from this we can calculate that f of z minus f of 0 by uh, z is equal to f prime of 0 plus f double prime of 0 uh, by 2 factorial uh, z squared plus so on sorry z here plus let me go one more expression f triple prime of 0 by 3 factorial times z squared plus so on for z belongs to uh, c minus 0. Okay. For c minus 0, because we are dividing by z, uh, f of z minus f of 0 uh, is this expression. Okay. So, this uh, power series, this is a power series. Okay. So, this is what we are defining uh, h of z to be uh, is analytic. We showed that the power series are analytic. Okay. So, analytic on uh, c minus 0. In fact, by defining um, h of 0 to be f prime of 0, okay, uh, we have uh, made it analytic on all of C. Okay. So, uh, h of z is actually analytic. So, h of 0 is equal to f prime of 0, if we consider this h. Okay. So, uh, so, h is analytic, okay, is entire actually. Okay. So, the definition of h of z as f of z minus f of 0 by z uh, is precisely uh, this kind of definition except at 0 and at 0 we have uh, remedied the situation by defining it to be f prime of 0. Okay. So, uh, h of z is precisely this power series which is valid on all of uh, the complex plane. Okay. So, h is entire we can now use the induction hypothesis. Okay. So, h is uh, the modulus of h notice is now going to be the modulus of f of z minus f of 0 uh, by uh, z. Okay. So, uh, firstly the modulus of h of z is bounded on the unit disk the closed unit disk, the closed unit disk 
right that is because h is continuous h is uh, entire function it is analytic. So, h is continuous. So, the modulus of h is continuous function a continuous function on compact set is uh, is bounded. Okay. So, uh, modulus of h of z is bounded. Okay. So, let modulus of h of z be less than or equal to m for z belongs to the closure of B 0 1. For z such that the modulus of z is strictly greater than 1, what we have is the modulus of h of z here is equal to the modulus of f of z minus f of 0 by z. Okay. So, the modulus of this is uh, less than the modulus of f of z by z plus the modulus of f of 0 by z. Okay. And we know uh, that the modulus of f of z uh, by z is less than the modulus of uh, a plus. So, here let me go to the uh, question. The question says the modulus of f of z is less than or equal to a plus b mod z power k. So, I will use that. So, the modulus of uh, f of z by z is less than or equal to a plus b mod z power k okay, uh, divided by mod z okay, plus uh, modulus of f of 0 by uh, z. Okay. And since this is strictly less than or uh, this is less than or equal to a plus modulus of f of 0 by modulus of z okay, and then plus b modulus of z power k minus 1. Okay. So, which is uh, less, I mean this is a constant okay, and modulus of z is greater than 1 tells that 1 by mod z is less than 1. So, this is less than uh, a plus modulus of f of 0 okay, plus b uh, times modulus of z power k minus 1. Okay. And by the induction hypothesis, this is some other constant c. Okay. So, by the induction hypothesis by this statement here, uh, okay, uh, we know that uh, h has to be a polynomial of at most degree k minus 1. Okay. So, by uh, induction hypothesis, uh, h is a polynomial of degree at most k minus 1. Okay. So, uh, going back to the definition of h. Okay. So, uh, z times h of z plus f of 0 gives f of z. So, f has to be a polynomial of at most degree uh, k. Okay. So, f of z is equal to z times h of z plus f of 0 is a polynomial of at most degree k. Okay, and that proves uh, okay, what our contention is. Okay, so, that shows that uh, f is a polynomial of at most uh, degree k. So, the next question is as follows. Okay, so, uh, find the uh, power series expansion of uh, the function 1 by z squared minus 3 z plus 2 about 0. Okay. Uh, find the radius of convergence. You can pause the video here to uh, answer the question yourself okay. and here is the solution. Okay. So, 1 by z squared minus 3 z plus 2 uh, can be written as well we will factorize z squared minus 3 z plus 2 as z minus 1 times z minus 2. Okay. And we observe immediately that the denominator uh, is 0 at 1 okay, and 0 also at 2. Okay. So, if you are going to determine a power series expansion around 0, okay, the function encounters this point 1. So, when you go in circles outwards of 0, there is a certain resistance at this point uh, 1. 
okay, where the function is not defined. Okay. Later, when we study singularities, uh, we will call uh, such a point a pole, okay. in this case a simple pole, okay. but in any case um, this uh, the, the Taylor series expansion of this function about 0 uh, can have a radius of convergence at most 1 from this kind of picture. Okay. So, we will also uh, show that um, directly okay, without resorting to this kind of uh, picture. Okay. So, 1 by z minus 1 times z minus 2 in order to write it in the form of power series uh, about 0. Okay. What we will do is split this into uh, partial fractions. Okay. So, when we split this into partial fractions, we get 1 by z minus 2 uh, minus 1 by z minus 1. And what we will do is expand 1 by z minus 1 and 1 by z minus 2 uh, independently as power series. Okay. So, this gives us this is equal to 1 by 1 minus z. Okay. So, I am taking this term first okay, and converting that to 1 by 1 minus z plus uh, or rather minus um, 1 by 2 minus z, okay, which can be written as 1 by 1 minus z. Uh, minus uh, a half times 1 by 1 minus z over 2. Okay. And 1 by 1 minus z we know has an expansion around 0, Taylor series expansion around 0, it is a, a geometric series z power n, n equals 0 through infinity minus half times uh, the expansion for uh, 1 minus z by 2 likewise is a geometric series n equals 0 through infinity of z by 2 uh, raised to n. Okay. And this series is equal to this function, okay. this is valid only for modulus of z strictly less than 1, okay. like we have remarked here in the picture. Okay. So, this picture uh, appears in this statement. Okay. And likewise, this expansion, this function is equal to this expansion only if the modulus of z by 2 is strictly less than 1, okay. uh, which means the modulus of z is strictly less than 2. Okay. So, this difference, so the difference of these two functions is equal to the difference of these two series if and only if both the series converge, which means um, converge to these functions, okay, which means uh, this series expansion is valid only on the intersection of these two sets, set of all z such that mod z is strictly less than 1, intersection set of all z such that mod z is less than 2, okay, which is simply uh, the set mod z is strictly less than 1. Okay. On uh, the disk of radius one, on the on the unit disk, okay, open unit disk, uh, this expansion is valid. Okay, n equals zero through infinity, z power n minus half times this. Okay, so now let's try to uh, put these two series together by collecting the coefficient of z power n in either. Okay, so this gives me one minus one by two times one by two power n is a that is the coefficient of z power n and so this is sigma n equals 0 through infinity z power n times 1 minus 1 by 2 power n plus 1. So, that is the power series expansion of uh, this function around 0 okay. and uh, this is valid uh, for mod z strictly less than 1. Okay. So, that is the solution to this problem. Okay. On to the next question. So, let f of t be a complex value uh, continuous function defined on a real interval a comma b. Okay. So, it is a uh, function of a real variable, complex valued function of a real variable, show that the Laplace transform k 
capital F of z is equal to integration from a to b e power uh, minus z t f of t d t okay, um, is uh, entire analytic for uh, any z belongs to c. Okay. So, uh, you can pause the video here to uh, answer the question yourself and here is the solution. So, uh, what we will show is capital F is differentiable for every uh, z in the complex plane okay. and uh, that will show that uh, capital F is analytic. Okay. So, um, let us consider the difference quotient let z belong to c. So, we will fix a particular z okay, f of z plus h minus f of z uh, divided by h. Okay. Here h is a complex number okay. h we will later make it 10 to 0. Okay. So, h belongs to c okay. um, we can take we can assume h has a small modulus if needed because we will eventually take the limit of this quotient as h tends to 0. Okay. So, this is equal to uh, the integration from a to b okay, of um, e power minus z plus h t okay, uh, f of t d t minus uh, integration from a to b of e power minus z t f of t d t. Okay, divided by uh, h. Okay, we'll simplify this. Well, firstly, this is integration from a to b, uh, a to b e power minus z t e power minus h t f of t d t minus integration from a to b e power minus z t f of t uh, d t. Okay, divided by h. So this is. 1 by h times all of this. Okay. So, this is 1 by h times well uh, I will combine these two integrals a to b uh, e power minus z t f of t times uh, e power minus h t minus 1 okay, uh, times d t. Okay. And I will write this again as since h is independent of the integration I can take h inside of integration okay, and then e power minus z t f of t uh, e power minus h t minus 1 by h d t. Okay. So, here uh, now one can after after this uh, basic calculation okay, one can see that this expression which is inside the integration okay, can be likened to the derivative of the function e power minus z let us let us say okay, uh, provided we have a t in the denominator here etcetera. Okay. So, uh, one then encounters uh, a problem because uh, t could be 0 in this interval a b. Okay. So, there are two cases. Okay. So, for the time being let us take the simpler case. Okay. So, suppose, suppose 0 does not belong to the interval a b. Okay. This is the easier case. So, if the interval a b is off of uh, 0 what we can do is then this is equal to. So, then the then let me take the limit as h goes to 0 of f of capital F of z plus h minus capital F of z by h that is going to be uh, the limit as h tends to 0 of this integral a to b e power minus z t f of t e power minus h t minus 1. Okay. So, then I am going to multiply and divide by t. Okay. I can do that because now 0 does not belong to uh, the interval a b. So, t cannot be 0. So, I can multiply and divide and then uh, this since the limit uh, h goes to 0 does not depend on t I can take the limiting process inside the integral. Okay. So, this is integration from a to b e power minus z t uh, f of t times limit as h goes to 0 well if h goes to 0 h t also goes to 0. 
okay, uh, of e power minus h t minus 1 divided by h t uh, times t d t. Okay. And um, we know that well um, e power letting uh, z or uh, I think I use z w equals h t. Okay. Uh, w tends to 0 as h tends to 0. Okay. Uh, we have limit as h t goes to 0. Okay. This limit is equal to, uh, so this limit I will just say that limit is equal to limit as w goes to 0 of e power minus w minus 1 by w. Okay. And that is the derivative of e power minus w at, uh, at 0. Okay. So, this is nothing but minus e power uh, minus 0 which is minus 1. Okay. So, with that I have uh, this is equal to, uh, so, uh, so this is all in parentheses. So, this is equal to uh, integration from a to b uh, minus t e power. So, I am taking this t here minus t e power minus z t f of t uh, d t. Okay. So, the derivative exists and so uh, if 0 does not belong to this interval a b, uh, I have shown that um, f is entire. Okay. So, um, f prime of z uh, is equal to minus integration from a to b t e power minus z t f of t d t and okay, for each uh, z belongs to c and hence capital F is entire. Okay. Now, in the other case where suppose 0 belongs to a b, then what one does is uh, one considers this integral uh, by splitting the integral at 0 and taking the limits uh, of, um, okay, so I will explain that f of z is equal to. Uh, so, suppose 0 is in there, okay, so uh, f of z can be written as limit as um, uh, I want to pick uh, s tends to 0 of integration from a to s of e power minus z t f of t uh, d t okay, and uh, plus limit as s tends to 0 of integration uh, from s to a b okay, e power minus z t f of t uh, d t. Okay. One uh, then uses what we have already done to conclude that this is uh, this right here okay, and this once again is uh, this right here okay, with s and b as limits okay, and then uh, one can club them club the two integrals because now uh, in the end after the derivative process okay, uh, uh, you can have uh, you I mean you can club these two limits. Okay, to get the integration from a to b of this expression. Okay. So, what I mean is this is independently integration from a to b uh, minus t e power minus z t f of t uh, d t limit as uh, sorry a to s I apologize limit a to s s goes to 0 plus limit as s goes to 0 uh, integration from s to b minus t e power minus z t f of t d t. Okay. So, we will delay uh, that limits. Okay. So, f prime of z will be that okay. and that can now be combined a to b minus t e power minus z t f of t d t. Because now, there is nothing improper about, uh, about combining these two uh, definite integrals uh, into this one. Okay. So, that is the other case. So, that shows that f is entire in any case, okay, capital F is entire. Okay. So, that is okay. and I um, will put one more question to the viewer. Okay. So, if f is an entire function, an entire non constant function, okay, show that the range of f is uh, a dense 
subset of uh, C. Okay, so uh, to show that it's a dense subset of C requires uh, some more work. Okay, so it's an exercise. So the next question is as follows. Uh, suppose that f and g are analytic functions on a region omega contained in C okay, uh, and that uh, f times g is identically the 0 function, okay, the constant 0 function uh, on the region omega. Uh, then prove or disprove the following. Either under these circumstances, either f is identically 0 on omega or g is identically 0 on omega. Okay, so, that is the question and try to solve it yourself. Okay, and I will provide the solution here. Okay. So, the idea is to use uh, the identity theorem. Okay. Uh, so, what is important is that uh, if f is not identically 0, okay, uh, then its uh, zeros are actually isolated. Okay. That is the uh, identity theorem. Okay. Notice that such a feature is not available for functions of uh, real numbers. Okay. A, a differentiable function uh, can be 0 for a while on the real line and then suddenly um, have a non-zero value or a pick up from there and have non-zero values beyond a point. Okay. So, uh, but that is not the case for uh, for functions of complex numbers or analytic functions of complex numbers, if they are 0 uh, on a set containing a limit point, then they are identically 0 uh, on the whole region of analyticity, okay? on the region of analyticity as long as uh, that is connected. Okay? So, so that is uh, true for analytic functions. Here, uh, now what we will do is we will suppose that f is not identically 0. If f is identically 0, then this statement is already true. Okay? So, let us suppose that f is not identically 0, then let us see what happens, uh, then the zeros of f are isolated. Okay? We have examined the zeros of analytic functions and uh, this is our conclusion from that okay the zeros of f are isolated okay and since they are isolated okay so let uh, z not belong to omega okay uh, f possibly could be zero there or uh, it, it is uh, possibly non zero there okay whatever that is uh, we know that uh, there is a neighborhood of of uh, z naught okay, uh, in omega such that f is not 0 okay, uh, in the in that neighborhood in the deleted neighborhood. Okay. So, in uh, the deleted neighborhood of z naught. Okay. More specifically, uh, we know that uh, we know that there is an R positive okay, by the properties of uh, the isolated zeros of analytic functions that um, or by continuity of f. Okay, uh, so, there are two cases if f of z naught is 0. Okay, uh, then we know this by the isolated zeros uh, of f. Okay, and if f of z naught is non-zero, then we know by the continuity of f 
that there is a r positive such that um, b z naught r is contained in omega okay this is by the openness of omega okay and uh, b prime f of z is non zero for uh, z belongs to b prime of z naught r okay so uh, that is true uh, if f is 0 at z naught then this is true because the zeros are isolated and uh, if f is non zero at z naught then this is true by the continuity of f in b z naught r it's analytic so it's definitely continuous in b z b prime z naught r okay so uh, that's true we know there is such an r and uh, since f is non zero in there okay but f times g is identically zero but f times g is identically zero uh, in uh, on omega uh, so in particular uh, we are left with no choice but uh, to say that g of z is equal to zero for any z belongs to b prime z not r because f is non zero there Okay. So, uh, what that tells us is that g the function g is 0 on a set with a limit point. Okay. So, notice that this is uh, an open set. Okay. So, every point in b prime z naught r is actually uh, a limit point. Okay. So, in particular uh, g of z is 0 okay, uh, on a set with a limit point. So, by the identity theorem we know that uh, so g is identically 0 on b prime z naught r okay. and uh, since omega is a region okay, we know that uh, it is connected okay, and on a on a portion of it on a set containing a limit point okay g is identically zero on it okay which is contained in omega okay so uh, since omega is a region g is identically zero on all of omega by the connectedness of omega okay since omega is connected okay uh, so that shows that this if we suppose that f is not identically 0, then g has to be identically 0, which proves this uh, statement. Okay. So, that is a solution to this problem. Let E be a non empty subset of C, okay. define f of z to be uh, the infimum of modulus of z minus w such that w belongs to E. Okay, so, the infimum is taken over all the points belonging to E okay, uh, for, uh, for, a, for a z belongs to C. For a given z belongs to C, you define f of z to be uh, this. Okay. Show that a f of z is continuous. function okay, continuous function on all of C okay, in C and B show that uh, uh, f of z is 0 if and only if uh, z belongs to the closure of E. Okay. So, this is a uh, question uh, the viewer is asked to solve okay. and then um, there is yet another question that I will put here. Okay. So, um, suppose uh, f is analytic, let f of z uh, be analytic function in the unit disk. Okay. Define uh, g of uh, w to be f of z, where 
W is T of z okay, and T is a Mobius transformation. mapping uh, the unit disk to unit disk or rather uh, unit disk conformally onto itself. Okay. Then show that the 1 minus the modulus of w squared okay, uh, times modulus of d g by d w is equal to 1 minus the modulus of z squared times modulus of d f by d z. Okay. So, you have to use the chain rule uh, to arrive at the solution. Okay. So, so, please try this problem. Okay. Also of interest is the following. Okay. It is very useful and important problem. Find uh, or give an expression. Okay. So, I will maybe give it as a show that. Okay. Show that t such that t of d is equal to d, okay, where d is the unit disk, unit b 0 1, okay, uh, okay, has the form, has the general form t of z is equal to e power i lambda uh, times z plus alpha by alpha bar z plus 1. Where lambda is a real constant okay, and alpha belongs to B01. Okay, so, the set of all transformations uh, which take the unit disk on to unit disk, that equality means that it takes a unit disk on to unit disk, has the form e power i lambda times z plus alpha divided by alpha bar z plus 1. Okay, so, this uh, is also an exercise for the viewer. All right. So, uh, with this, uh, I will uh, stop this session here. Okay. So, the viewer is asked to solve more exercises uh, and try to uh, gain a good understanding of the theory via the problems as well.